the critics that start off their reviews going, this is the worst time I've had in the dark since uh, my wife left me, you know? You know, they come out and gun for a movie, uh, which may be a very poor effort. I'm not, I'm not saying they're wrong, but that's not the focus of film criticism to me, either as a director or as a consumer. I mean, you know, I don't care what kind of time you had in the movie. Let's talk about what the film is and try to, try to write a critique of it that's constructive. Uh, also, when I started making movies, I saw that the critics very often didn't understand what I was doing and would criticize it. I'll give you an example. I, I brought it because I thought this is a really good example for this, for this interview. Uh, the critic at the New York Times who reviewed uh, Back to School wrote, but the director unfortunately allowed Sally Kellerman, an actress who can do much better, to mug and pose almost every moment she's on the screen, playing Thornton's sexy English literature teacher. Miss Kellerman pouts her lips, lowers her eyelids, and tries much too hard. The result? is less like a comic characterization by a real person and more like an animated pinup. Okay, Rodney Dangerfield's character in Back to School, one of the things that scared me most about making the movie was that Rodney had a romantic love interest in the movie. And Rodney's public persona was totally asexual. You know, this business, I mean, there's, I mean to, to, to get him into a kiss with Sally Kellerman was a huge risk hugely risky proposition for me. So I read every age-appropriate actress and a few age-inappropriate actresses to play this role. It was, it was the role I was most scared of in the movie. And so I, and Sally came in and she and Rodney, she just made it work. She made it believable enough so that we wouldn't get laughed at when Rodney kissed Sally. And I felt that kiss was, a, it was symbolic of, uh, consummating the relationship, that first kiss, right? And Rodney was so unsensual and sexual in his public persona that I thought people were gonna get up and walk out of the theater when they saw him kiss a girl, you know? It just, I, I didn't know how I could pull it off or he could pull it off. So Sally played it exactly how it had to be played. It was a tightrope and it worked. Now this, this reviewer began her review, the first line of this review is, Rodney Dangerfield is an acquired taste. And I went, out the window, <laughs> you know what I mean? She had a preconceived, I mean, she was embarrassed to write a review of a Rodney Dangerfield movie for the New York Times. It was beneath her, right? Uh, ironically, and I was disappointed in this review, it wasn't a totally bad review either. I mean, it said the film, you know, was popular. But uh, I was disappointed. It was New York's Rodney's hometown, and it's the New York Times, and to get a mediocre review in the New York Times was disappointing for a young director. And uh, a week later, I got a phone call from a friend of mine. Have you read Russell Baker's column in the New York Times? No. A week later, Russell Baker wrote a column, and it was titled, What We Can Learn From Back to School. And I remember the line in it, he, he had gone to see the movie, and he referenced the bad review, and he said, in this case, the public is right. And did a whole redemption review of Back to School. I, I thought it was a miracle.